What's going on, Rebels fans? It's your internet pal, Andy Gutierrez, beaming at you over the airwaves of the information superhighway from inside Lucasfilm headquarters. This week, Rex finally got a little Clone Wars closure in the last battle, and now I'm here to take you behind the scenes. This is Rebels Recon. <laughs> Kanan, Ezra, Zeb, and Rex embark on a mission to raid an abandoned transport for supplies on Agabar, but soon discover they're not alone. You have been captured by the Separatist Alliance. Forced to play a war game in order to rescue Zeb, Rex must fight the Clone War one last time. Well, looks like we win. But when the Empire arrives, the droids are forced to work with the Rebels to hatch a successful escape plan. It was a victory. We all just won the Clone War. This week, Rex was forced to battle in the Clone Wars one more time to save his friends. I sat down with cast and crew to talk about what it was like bringing Rex back to the Clone Wars, whether or not he has closure on this chapter of his life, and how he's grown as a character. Check it out. Captain Rex returns to the Clone Wars in The Last Battle. Yes. What is it like bringing him back to the era of fighting with battle droids and the Separatists in the Republic? Bringing Rex back into a Clone Wars scenario is very surreal. He's done this so much that he's able to jump back into that, and as well as to sort of assist the others in setting up exactly what the deal is, because they don't understand what mm -hmm. this deal is. In The Last Battle, our heroes get to relive the Clone Wars a little bit. As a veteran of that show, what is it like for you to return to this era? Oh my gosh, it's like coming home. I developed in the series with Dave and George in the beginning, kind of taking a, a revisit to that was really awesome. It was so interesting to see battle droids again. There's that moment when stormtroopers are fighting battle droids mm -hmm. that this whole thing felt like, wow, we're actually doing this. It's something that you kind of wondered about but never actually got to see. Honestly, it felt the most like we were playing with toys from different toy lines <laughs> that we've ever had on this show. Rex is quite literally a relic of the Clone Wars. Do you think that this experience has given him much closure? I think absolutely. If you think about how the Clone Wars ended with Order 66, the clones never got a chance to finish their mission. Rex is such a good soldier that the idea that he never had a good sort of mission completion has got to be this hole in his life. The war was basically yanked from under him. I got to think that the way the clones are engineered, that's got to be something that hovers over their heads. How do you think Rex has grown since the last time he fought in a Clone Wars type scenario? He's got the full authority authority of his experience, but I think he's also more mellowed in sort of a personal way. There's more humanity to him in a way, I mm -hmm. think. Kanan also fought in the Clone Wars, but obviously had a very different experience. How can this more mature Kanan handle this experience differently? If anything, it gives Kanan an ability to look at his clone comrade as an equal. Mm -hmm. He's like back in the original Clone Wars, he was just a kid, and he was particularly betrayed by Order 66 and then ended up being hunted by his own clone officers. Kanan and Rex have learned to be a team in season two. Mm -hmm. There was a time where that trust was zero and Rex has legitimately earned it over time. And it's probably the one thing that Kanan looks at from his past and doesn't hate. Seeing that as no longer representative of, of Depa's death as much as it is someone he trusts. And they really do become a good team. Ezra was born on the day that the Clone Wars ended. What has he learned from this experience? I think really this is a chance for him to step inside of Kanan's shoes and really understand what he went through. This experience gives Ezra some insight into why Kanan is resistant to war. This is something that really does mash you up and grind you up and have a really negative effect on your growth as a Jedi. The Clone Wars were a huge deal because it's like a history lesson. Ezra associates everything with Kanan because of him being a Jedi and how he sees things. Ezra naturally sees them in a similar way. And the Jedi's point of view on the Clone Wars is much different than a lot of other people's. Now that the war has finally ended for Kalani, mm -hmm. what's he gonna do? The idea of what people who were in the Clone Wars thought the Clone Wars were about after it ended is an interesting idea. Because we know that Palpatine slash Sidious was gaming the whole thing. And the whole purpose of the war was just to get him power. So you get someone who's really smart, like a tactical droid, surviving that situation, not shutting down, and having a couple of decades to think about it. I think that's really interesting. Kalani could hire himself out as a advisor to someone like the Huts. I also thought that once Kalani sees that the rebellion destroys the Death Star and starts actually making it a fight with the Empire, he might reconsider joining them. Chopper, come on man, you said you wanted to play some football. Let's get going. Dude, Dude. Yay. Because you're British now. Where's the football? What? Come on, man. This thing is like 25 bucks. What's wrong with you? 
each week you send us your Rebels questions. And each week I manage to track down the Lucasfilm story group's Pablo Hidalgo in what is most definitely not a staged or scripted exchange. What wackadoo situation will we find him in this week? Let's find out. Pablo, hey, sorry to interrupt your game. It looks thrilling. Yeah. I've got a question for you. Yeah, shoot. All right. Sean Schutz asks, Rebels Recon, what's the timeline with Wedge between the Antilles extraction and his appearance in the Ahsoka novel? There is another. Three others, actually. I mean, if you look at the movies in the Star Wars saga, we have three characters named Antilles. We've got Wedge Antilles in episodes four, five, and six. Mm -hmm. We have Captain Ramus Antilles, who Bail Organa orders to have 3PO's memory erased, and he's the guy who Vader strangles at the beginning of A New Hope. He's the one in the Ahsoka novel. And then we also have Bail Antilles, who Captain Panaka mentions as throwing in his hat to become the new Chancellor in episode one. So that makes me think Antilles is a pretty common name, not unlike a Smith or a Garcia or a Silva in the Star Wars galaxy. Right on. Thanks, Pablo. Sure thing. Have more questions about the last battle or any other Rebels questions burning away in your brain box? Tweet them to at Star Wars using the hashtag Rebels Recon and we'll answer what we can online. Now, it's time for a sneak peek of our next episode, Imperial Super Commandos. Turn around! Slowly. Rao? Your men weren't laying a trap. They were ambushed. The Empire? Not the Empire. Other Mandalorians. Thanks for watching Rebels Recon. We'll be back before you know it with another brand new episode. But in the meantime, check out the episode guide for The Last Battle on StarWars.com on Monday. And if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and download the Star Wars app. Thanks again, and may the Force be with you.